Hello, this is Matt with Thrive Matsu. I'm the Youth Programs Coordinator uh, with Thrive. And today we're talking with uh, CCS for our Thrive Partner uh, Spotlight for the month of March. And uh, Mark Lackey is the Executive Director for CCS. Aaron Clemens is the Operational Director for, for the organization. Um, will you each tell me a little bit about your role with the organization? Sure, yeah, thanks for uh, taking some time to visit with us, Matt. Um, so yeah, I'm the Executive Director of CCS Early Learning. I've been here since uh, 2009, working in one capacity or another. And been the executive director since uh, 2005. So uh, great uh, organization, excited to tell you a little bit more about it. Sounds great. And uh, thank you again, Matt. Uh, this is Aaron Clements and I'm the operations director. And as, as part of my role, I get to support um, admin, support Mark and support the organization in uh, our goals and our mission. Sometimes that looks like uh, helping to manage facilities. Sometimes it looks like uh, supporting wellness activities um, and just trying to be a, a support in any way, shape or fashion uh, that I can. <clears throat> nice, so you kind of wear the hats that are needed. Yeah, I think so, try to, at least a couple of them. <clears throat> nice. Um, well, we're grateful for CCS's partnership with Thrive. Uh, Mark, can you tell us a little bit more about the organization? Sure. Yeah. So uh, CCS uh, has been in business since 1971. We just uh, a year, year ago celebrated our 50th uh, anniversary. Uh, and we are the uh, Head Start and Early Head Start provider for the Matsu and then also uh, in Chugiak in Eagle River. We've got a location there as well. Um, and so basically that means our, the programs and services that we offer are primarily federally funded. Uh, we do early childhood, so it's all under the age of five. Um, and Head Start and Early Head Start are both federal programs. So we follow all those federal rules and we bring, um, uh, you know, Alaskans federal tax dollars back into our community nice. uh, to serve children and families. So, uh, we're a fairly large organization. We have 140 employees now, um, and uh, we're, we're serving over 400 kids uh, every single year, um, or that's what we hope to do again once COVID kind of wraps its way back up and we get back into normal uh, life. So um, the, the thing I think that's important to that kind of sets us apart from other early childhood services is that we're really, really comprehensive. So we have, you know, classrooms and kids are coming in and we're helping those individual kids, you know, progress and grow, figuring out where they're at in their development. But we've got this whole other section of services that are helping families. So we have family partnership coordinators and family advocates that are helping families to grow uh, and to develop as well. So all of our families sit down with those family staff and they say, hey, here's here's the goals that I have for my child that I want us to be on the same page uh, on, but also here's some goals for my family, uh, you know, and, you know, we'd love to get some help uh, on these types of things. So it might be parenting classes. It could be health issues. Uh, some families, you know, adult education, housing, uh, there's all kinds of family issues that are out there. And if we can help those families directly, we do. Or if we can connect them to people in the community, Thrive is a, a great uh, example of an organization that we partner with to make sure that we're getting family services um, that really can help them to meet their own family goals. So um, nice. yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of CCS in a nutshell. That sounds great. Um, well, we really appreciate the role that you guys are serving. Um, Aaron, can you tell me a little bit about the age range for, of students for each location that your organization serves? Sure. So as Mark mentioned, we have locations throughout the Matsu uh, and Chugiak. And so uh, just generally, the age ranges, uh, depending on which center, can be as young as six weeks all the way up to five years old. Um, we follow the school district calendar in determining you know, if, where our five-year-olds fit. Um, but uh, so we'll start with uh, Meadow Lakes. Um, we have a center, center there. And so that is for the three to five year olds. It's the Head Start uh, preschool program. 
And then here in Wasilla, we have early Head Start. Uh, we call it Wasilla Early um, Head Start. And so that is um, the infants through toddlers up to three years old, uh, depending on where they're at. Uh, and then uh, adjacent or you know, pretty close. Um, we have our uh, Wasilla Head Start uh, program, which is a preschoolers. And then all the way over um, in Palmer, um, it's a building that uh, one wing has the preschool and one wing has the, the infants and toddlers. Um, over in Chugiak, um, that is for our preschool kids. So that three to five year range. Um, and we are excited. We are building uh, a new center off Fairview and KGB, uh, that area. Uh, hope to be ready in September. And so we are yet to be determined, but uh, hoping that we can have potentially both early, early Head Start programs. So that infant toddler as well as uh, preschool classrooms. Um, let's see, Mark, am I missing any center that I'm not thinking about at the moment. Yeah, I think you got them all. And one thing that I, I didn't mention that I should have is kind of the target audience on who we're serving, you know, eligibility for these programs. Uh, that probably would be important to share. So we're a Head Start and Early Head Start are primarily designed for low income families. Uh, and so uh, we're, we're serving 100% of poverty and below. Um, there's also uh, some categories that um, we serve a lot of. So children that are kind of categorically eligible, which means top of the list, are kids that are in foster care uh, and kids whose families are homeless. Uh, and so typically um, one of every three kids that we serve is either in foster care or their family is homeless. So 33% of our kids come from those two categories. Uh, and then we have a lot of uh, families that are below those income guidelines as well. The other, other category is disabilities. So children that have an identified disability, uh, we, we are required by law to set aside 10% of our slots for those kids that have some sort of a disability. So uh, we're looking for for those kids to kind of help them get a head start, um, help them to catch up a little bit as well. Um, so yeah, that's that's who we're looking for and where we're serving them and all the ages, I think. That's great. Well, and the whole purpose behind Thrive is is prevention. And so we're grateful to have so many different partners and on different points on that prevention continuum. And so i um, super grateful for your partnership. And I also wanted to mention that when you guys had your uh, Palmer grand opening this past summer, uh, my family and I attended and my my 10 year old Isaac got to take a goat on a walk. And so that was one, <laughs> one of his highlights of, of the experience. We got some pictures of him walking goats around. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, well, it was a, a block party and it was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Um, uh, Aaron, what steps should parents follow to register students for CCS? <clears throat> Yeah, so I guess one thing um, is, as Mark just talked about, you know, eligibility, you know, thinking about, you know, um, if they qualify and if they're, you know, not sure on the fence, that is just fine. Um, we have online applications on our website, um, ccsalaska.org. Uh, we also, um, if any parent calls us, they can call really any center. Um, and we can get them a paper application if that is preferred. Um, also, depending on, you know, if they live in Palmer and really want to go to Palmer, uh, they're welcome to call that building. And as Mark talked about, we have family partnership coordinators and others that can have a conversation to talk about, you know, do they meet criteria um, or just kind of give them a little bit of a snapshot. But the best way to do it Usually the most efficient is to start with our website and, and do the online application um, and then expect a call back uh, from there. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have waiting lists at certain areas and sometimes we don't. And so it's, it's always a good, uh, a good time, no matter what time of year to go ahead and, and apply and, and uh, then have that conversation about, you know, what those next steps might be. <clears throat> Sounds good. Um, Mark, why do you feel like preschool programs like CCS are so important? Well, I think it's primarily what you just mentioned. It's that whole prevention piece, right? Uh, so 
uh, at one point in time, I had young children. Uh, now they're uh, teenagers and, uh, you know, not nearly as cute. But <laughs> those, those kids don't come with uh, owner's manuals. They really don't. And so as parents, um, you know, we are really figuring out what this child needs and is this normal? Is this not normal? Uh, and prevention is just a huge, huge part, uh, you know, of keeping uh, kids on track. And if we can help these kids as early as possible, and it's not for all families. I mean, some, some families, um, you know, that they've got a, a parent at home or they've got, you know, siblings and there's lots of growth and learning that happens in those environments. And that is great. We're, we support that. Uh, but for kids that might be delayed in some way or for kids that uh, whose parents are both working, we want to provide the highest quality educational environment, know that those kids, um, if they have delays, that they're getting all the assistance they can uh, and families as well. You know, if we can help a family to really have uh, a strong foundation and to not, you know, get get hurdles or roadblocks in their way you know we're going to be with these kids for just a couple of years here before they go off to school but their families are going to be able to invest in these kids you know for many years uh and so whatever we can do to give kids and give families all the the tools for success uh that's that's uh, really i think what all of us want i always try and make the analogy you know about uh, uh investing you know, if you're, if you're going to try and build up a nest egg or you're going to try and be successful with your money, you invest it as early as possible. Right. And as a society, you know, we need to do that with our, our people as well. All of these littles, um, you know, this is as parents, we just know we felt it that our kids are learning right from wrong and they're learning how to say their R's and they're learning how to share and all those things in these earliest developmental years. Uh, so it's just an opportunity for us to invest as early as we can and have the dividends, have that investment grow uh, over the course of their lifetimes. Absolutely. Well, once again, I just want to say on behalf of Thrive, we're very grateful for CCS's role in the community and the investment you guys are making in our young students and in our families. And so just keep up the good work, guys. And for everybody watching, if you could uh, just check out the links in this video, uh, we're going to link to all of their social media and we're going to link to that application that Aaron mentioned. And so please show your support uh, for CCS by following their various social media channels. So thanks uh, very much, guys, for your time today. Thank you. Appreciate Matt. it, Matt. Thanks for what Thrive does as well. We uh, really value your partnership. Appreciate that. Appreciate your support. All right. Thanks, guys.